Okay, well, let us call this meeting to order at 6.33. And first thing to ask is, are there any additions to the agenda? Seeing none, let's talk about the minutes from July 11th, 2022. Any comments on those minutes? I read them and they won't talk to me. Judith? Um, yep, no, that looks fine. Um, so I would move for um, approval of the minutes. I second that. Okay, and there's nothing in there that diverges from my memory of that meeting. So <laughs> I wasn't at that meeting. <laughs> um, so all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it. And public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public who are here for something other than what appears on the agenda to comment on that matter. Or if you're here for something that appears on the agenda but want to comment on a different matter, that's fine too. Seeing none, we will go into discussion on the use of ARPA funds. We have an overall discussion on the process to allocate ARPA funds. And Gina, did you have an idea how to set this discussion up? Um, I do not. I'm looking for the board's thoughts. I know there, this has been discussed in the past prior to my joining. So I'm really looking to see how the board, I'm not sure how anything like this may have been done in the past in the town. I am a rather new resident and certainly yep. new, new to the town administrator role. So looking to the board on how you would like to start creating a list for the use of ARPA funds. Okay, well, we have previously said that we are interested in giving some portion of the ARPA funds to CV Fiber, and then we have hesitated on following through with that because we have learned that there's some questions about uh, exactly what I's must be dotted and T's must be crossed in order to do that and guarantee that the funds will not be brought back. Well said. I like that thing. Yeah. <laughs> so we are just beginning the discussion on the use of the ARPA funds and, and uh, figuring out how to move forward with it. Right. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. So what Thank do you, you. think? <laughs> it sounds good. We don't want to call them back. <laughs> now we did have directions, but I did notice a bunch of other towns have given some money to CV. Right. And we'll talk and about that. Judith? You know, it's that they didn't that they weren't really that concerned about the clawbacks. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what it appears. You know, Bonnie hasn't come back yet with any additional information. It's something she's looking into as well because she heard that towns had committed funds. So, you know, I I haven't, like I said, I, I, had, I spoke to Carl earlier. Um, I plan to reach back out to Bonnie after this meeting. Just wanted to see where this discussion went and then I'll follow up with her. But, you know, whether there should or should not be a concern, I think right now, we're unclear on. I thought that Judith has been trying to say oh, something. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. No, I um I guess I'm just still looking for um certainty or you know questions answered regarding you know what factors to watch out for or what language to avoid or what uses of the funds or what for what purposes the funds are to be used. Um, I know that we kind of um, put a pin in the allocation. I think that we're, you know, um, in spirit behind it, but I wanna make sure that we know what we're doing and we're doing it in the correct way. Um, so that's specifically regarding CV fiber, regarding how, how we should approach review and consideration of requests for the town to use the ARPA funds. Recording um, in progress. Um, it's okay. Um, I think we should have a process um, whereby we announce to the town, hey, we have this money, we'd like your input. Um, and that could be either we have a, a select board hearing at which we invite folk to and or, or both, we um, ask folk to submit ideas or proposals to us through the town clerk and we kind of set a, a deadline or an approximate time frame when we'd be considering those. I think it's important that we kind of throw out um, or alert 
the town to what the um, the amount of money we have and the scope of uses for it, and then ask the town what they'd be interested in in us investing in. I think it's better to have kind of a process or approach rather than working on an ad hoc basis, first come, first serve, squeaky wheel gets the money. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, we've we've had good um, folks who have come forward so far have, you know, good purposes for the funds and that's great. And there are likely others who have good uses or purposes for the fund. I just wanna make sure that we're being deliberate and thoughtful um, and that we kind of consider, we give folks an opportunity to submit their requests and that we have a considered approach and we can even, you know, establish criteria for how we evaluate those requests. Um, so that's, that was my thinking. That's, okay. That's in line with what we already thought. Mm -hmm. yeah. new, but I just wondered about the CV fiber thing is still up in the air. I guess. As right. far as we, go. And we have the executive director here, Janelle okay. Smith. Uh, Janelle, do you want to talk to us about September 15th and, uh, what happens on that day? Yep. Hi, thanks for having me today. Um, so I am the executive director of CV fiber and we're building <sighs> 1,200 miles of fiber to the underserved or unserved in central Vermont, and that includes East Montpelier. It's one of our 21 towns who, who signed up for to be a member of CV Fiber's district. So um, what, we're, what we're doing is we're building these 1,200 miles using ARPA funds. Um, we ha we ha we we expect the backbone that's the main uh the main 1200 miles to be built at a cost of in the range of 50 million dollars um somewhere in the range of 35 40 percent of that is going to be paid for by arpa funds <laughs> that we're getting directly oh. or um and then some other portion of it will come from the bond market or other grants as we're applying to other grants. So the where where the towns come in is that the towns can contribute a portion of their town ARPA funds also to build out within the towns. Now, the reason for this and the reason this is important is because the ARPA funds go toward building the backbone or the main 1200 miles of the network, but they don't go to drops to individual hookups. Um, the numbers I have here are there that I, I can just give you some numbers that I have for how many eligible addresses of unserved or underserved or in this <laughs> um, that is 259 underserved or unserved folks in, um, in East Montpelier. So the approximate cost, and this is done on a business modeling based on um, the a combination of overhead, under, underground, buried, um, as well as based on the approximate or average distance from the closest pole to the home. Um, and that is uh, sometimes around 400 feet, sometimes a bit more or less. Um, so the cost to hook each eligible address up is about $1,650. Um, so that needs to come from somewhere. <laughs> and this is often where towns are wanting to spend ARPA funds to fill the gap in where our ARPA funds cannot pay for it, but the town's ARPA funds can pay for individual hookups. So the town, the, the, the ARPA funds that come from the town can fill in the gap to hook up individuals within the town of East Montpelier. Um, the, the total cost to hook up the 259 addresses, doing the math at 1,650 an address, it's about 427,000 to hook up the individual addresses. Um, so the, the magic of September 15th <laughs> is that the Vermont Communications Broadband Board, VCBB, 
the state entity that oversees the, the broadband build out and all of the communications union districts of which CB Fiber is one. The VCBB has committed to match every town ARPA dollar uh, that is committed before September 15th. So uh, for instance, if, if, Montpelier, if East Montpelier gives a dollar, VCBB gives a dollar if it's committed uh, before September 15th. And that is money to be spent exclusively within the boundaries of East Montpelier in the way that East Montpelier wants. So I, I throw out the idea of drops because that's what a lot of folks are talking about in other towns, but there, it can go toward hooking up the library or the schools or community centers. Um, it, it can go toward hooking up places that the public wants to hook up. Okay, so it doesn't have to go to war drops. It's just oftentimes what folks think about are drops. And the second is often the public places, the, the public entities, the schools, the libraries, et cetera. So that's where the, the magic, that's where the magic number uh, September 15th comes. Um, so whereas it would cost $427,000 to connect uh, the uh, 259 eligible addresses, it would cost uh, East Montpelier $213,000 because of that matching fund. So basically half of the cost that it would normally cost East Montpelier to hook up those addresses if that's what East Montpelier wanted to do with the CV fiber allocation if they, if they decided to allocate certain funds to the broadband. Could I ask what was that thing again? 200 what? Two, 213. Was the number of households or is that what you said? No, 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 the money that. The money that it would cost us to yeah. build it up. 427. Right. 427 in total. No, no, so no. What no, she no. was saying but is the half. If you do it before the 15th, it's half. Correct. That's yeah. a good deal. I wish my family was like that. Judith had a question or yeah. comment. Uh, I'm wondering if you can provide us with the um, the sources for the September 15th. Like if there's a VCBB, um, if there's a reg or something that provides that, if you can forward that on to Gina and she can forward it on to us, um, that'd be helpful. In the past, when we were talking with CV Fiber, um, the contribution I think that they were looking for us to um, provide was to kind of fill in work that had already been done. So you're saying that if we were to um, approve um, authorization of X of our ARPA funds to you, we can specify that those funds be used for providing service within the town of, or whether it's you know building lines or drop. Well, I forget the name, term that you used. Um, drops within the town of drops within the town of East Montpelier. We can specify that and have it be used ex exclusively for that and not for other funds or other uses or paying off. Um, you know, um, work that's already been done? Yeah, so the, the money that comes from East Montpelier in East Montpelier's ARPA contributions must be spent within East Montpelier, okay? Mm -hmm. So that can be spent in whatever way East Montpelier wants to spend it. Okay. I have a question about the mission of CV Fiber. All the times up until very recently that I have heard presentations on it, I have understood that CV Fiber would have to start building somewhere and would prioritize the unserved and underserved areas and then would build out to all the households and businesses in all the member towns and cities. And now I hear you saying, and I see in this draft agreement, uh, no language about that final build out, but rather just saying we're going to in the next three or four years get to all the unserved and underserved areas. So I'm wondering if you can clarify for us what you see as a current mission. I have fiber right now. I, I want to switch from consolidated to uh, CV fiber. 
Uh, will I have that option when? Um, so do you live in East Montpelier, I assume? Correct. Yeah. Um, so of the of the priority that is 2022 to 2023 build, um, of the 259 addresses, 147 of them are considered uns or well, they're considered uh, to be in the priority or 2022 2023 build. That's 147 out of the 259. So the but to kind of take a step back at the mission of CV Fiber. So CV Fiber's mission is to provide affordable high-speed internet to everyone within their member district, okay? okay. Everyone. But, and here's the but, ARPA funds cannot be spent unless it's to the unserved or underserved, okay? Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so absolutely our priority is the unserved and underserved. We want to be available to everybody, but in order to build out the first part of the network, in order to apply the ARPA funds at all, it needs to be to the eligible addresses, which are the unserved and underserved. Yep. Okay. So I got a question about that. So say the underserved address that you're gonna build the line to, that's gonna go by a lot of other people also. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, in some cases. Um, yeah, not all. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, but it happens. Yes. The, yes. the, the overbuild. So, is yeah. Okay. The next question is, if we gave money to CV Fiber and it was matching money and got the 400 and something thousand, that money just has to go to the underserved addresses. For because, the it's ARPA, because it's ARPA funding. Yes. Exactly. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I was just trying to get it clear in my mind. Or the community yeah. centers, the school. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because that that lowers the bill mm -hmm. eventually yep. for the for the drops mm -hmm. to each house. It's yep. just it'd be less. Right. Okay. Another hand up. Yeah. Somebody else. Scott. Oh, Scott. Hey, I'm I'm on a select word, but um, is that Janelle? Is that uh, number? Is that a hard fat and hard fast number? Or could that number potentially change the number to East Montpelier? I know you, you said you're paying for, you know, you, you'll split it with us half. But is that a is that a, a a hard number that that's what East Montpelier would have to contribute? No, no, no. East Mont Montpelier contribute can contribute all six hundred and some odd thousand or zero or fifty or, or, no, or, or five of <laughs> those two hundred odd people. Could the, could the cost potentially escalate depending on what the environment or the you know costs or materials or otherwise yeah. might incur for uh, AC fiber? Yeah. So right now the estimated cost of hooking up each address is sixteen fifty one thousand six hundred and fifty. That's the estimated cost. Could it yeah. be more or less when we get in there? It yeah. could be. It could. Um, that's the best we have right now based on business uh, plan, looking at like what we think it's going to cost, looking at the total yeah. likely cost of build out for materials and labor and, but it could go up or down. And, and, and it, a big part of that depends on whether it's overhead or underground as well, because trenching and underground tends to cost more. And part of it uh, does depend on who the takers are. So if we have a large percentage of folks who have longer runs, then that's going to be more. If they're closer to the closest pole, that's going to be less. So yeah, it, it does fluctuate. It does fluctuate. That cost per address is likely to go up or down a bit. That's the best estimate that we have. It's probably very close, but it could fluctuate. Just as long as it's like words on, you know, understands that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, somebody else has a question. It's, okay. sorry, it's me again. It, um, Scott's question and the reaction um, or the response prompted this. So um, it, it appears that we as a select board in any agreement and what we reach with you, we can specify where and how we want you to kind of direct your focus with the ARPA funds we're contributing to. So if we as a select board think, okay, where are the public spots that are underserved do we want to hit those? And then after that, you know, what the process for selecting the un underserved, is that 
do you just kind of go out to all of them anyway, or do you, are you requesting folks to initiate with you? Yes, we're underserved and we would like to be provided service. Or are you giving it to every, not giving, but linking it, linking it to every underserved? Am I making sense? Yes, I think you're making sense. Let me, let me try to answer the question. And if I didn't sure. answer the question, then we can rephrase it. But um, so the, the, the answer is we are making this internet available to every single person on our eligible addresses list, okay? So it will be available to everyone, regardless of what the town says or doesn't say, we're, we're responsible for making high-speed internet available to every unserved and underserved address within East Montpelier, and that's Got it. our plan. Okay. But they yeah. don't have to take it. Oh no! Absolutely up. not! Right. No, no! You, you, <laughs> you, you don't have to sign up for it. Yeah. I, I mean, if you, if you don't want high speed internet, you certainly do not need to sign up for high speed internet. It's just exactly. going to be available. <laughs> so you have two hundred something addresses you have identified as underserved, but out of that two hundred something, they may not all take it or sign up. Right? Yeah. So I have a question. Okay. Um, would it be feasible for you to handle a condition like this put on our contributions. And I'm not saying we want to do it, just thinking aloud. Uh, let's say we want to make it easy for the people who, uh, for most people who are underserved or unserved to get a, a quick connection uh, at no cost for the connection. But if somebody has bought a place or built a place that's a quarter mile off the road, we don't want to subsidize running the, the fiber all the way up there. Could we say, we'll pay for the connection and the first 200 feet of run, for example? Would that make sense for you guys? It would, yes, it, it would make sense. You can put a condition on there like that. We could even put a condition on there like that. Like if we if we sign subscribers up, we could say, hey, we'll we'll pay for the first X number of feet or our operator who's installing could do that or or you could do that. Yes, that is a reasonable condition on subscription. Or cap, just a dollar amount. Right, right. What's that, Gene? Um, what's the definition of underserved? Uh, under 25, three um, available internet by some other provider. Like 25.3 megabits. Oh, 25, uh, 25 over three speed. 25 down, three up. Yep. You don't have to prove that you get it. You just have to prove that you signed up for a package that where that's available, regardless of how fast it actually is when it gets to you. And the list is the list, the list of underserved are those that are on the map that was provided. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yeah. yeah, no, it, no, it, that's right. The, the, the map of underserved eligible addresses is the, is the 259 that, that we're counting as underserved or unserved. Okay. So I'd like to direct your attention, Janiel, to part six of this draft agreement and to subsection C of that. Tell me when you're ready. Yeah, the, home, the, the, hold, the hold harmless clause. This is hold harmless from any claims, et cetera, against the town for recoupment of the town's ARPA funds transferred to CV Fiber, uh, where the claims are from CV Fiber is wrongful or unlawful expenditure of any or all the town broadband investments. So that, I think, is touching on one of the concerns that we've had, which is that we could turn this money over to you in good faith without asking the questions that these other towns have apparently not asked, and, and then later on find out that there's some federal technicality, which means you can't expend it legally or, or or maybe you do something in good faith and but end up not uh, expending it legally and we don't want to have it clawed back uh, from us um, so is, is this to protect us from that so if it's clawed back from us that we could get it back from you um this is uh, are you are you saying does this prevent a clawback 
uh, does this prevent, uh, does this make East Montpelier held harmless for any clawback from the federal government? Because we're going to get the money back from CV Fiber if that happens. Yeah, so um, it could it could be read broadly that way. Um, it, it says that it says that um, that CV Fiber would hold the town harmless. Yeah. For proceedings against the town um that but but it specifically says it says that where the they result from cv fibers wrongful or unlawful expenditure uh -huh. so i it, it would have to be it would have to be wrongful or unlawful yeah okay so i quite do that it may, may not be it may yeah not, yeah yeah so I guess what I would like to do is going forward, I'm very cognizant of this September 15th deadline. And like you said, that's a good deal. If we yeah. can double the amount of money available to uh, get CV fiber uh, yeah. places in town. Um, on the other hand, we still have uh, VLCT and regional planning telling us we're not quite sure about all of this. So what I'd like to do is kind of proceed on two prongs. One, Kind of keep pushing to VLCT and, and regional planning, say, come on, give us some, some firm information. And then the other, take this to uh, Jim Barlow as our attorney and say, is there anything that we can write into here that would uh, prevent us from clawback if we can't get in information by September 15th about uh, what the feds think is right? So just, just can we ask, you've, you've had some towns commit some ARPA funds to you. I've, I've read that. Is it quite a few? It looked like it was eight towns or something. That's quite a few. A was handful that of towns, a hand, yeah, a handful of towns have committed funds, yes. Right, and was that a question that they asked you at that time about the Plata? Um, there was, uh, yeah, there was a one town that, uh, that, that there was some uh, clawback provision written in there if they weren't, ex if the funds weren't expended by the deadline. Um, oh, they, they, they made an agreement with you with it that was, yeah it had to do with the, it had to do with the time frame of the uh allocation like if, if it, the funds weren't spent by the deadline now the funds have to be spent by the end of 2026 so it had to do with you know if it's just sitting there doing nothing then it belongs to the yeah. town kind of thing Judith, please. and and so the september 15th date that's the date for the commitment from the town not necessarily the fulfillment of your obligations within the agreement. It's the town committing con to convey their um, portion of their ARPA funds to you. So it's actually just the deadline for the match from BCBB. The town can commit fun funds anytime, but it's strongly recommended that you get the match, right? I mean, it, you want yeah. double the money yeah. if you can get it. Yeah. yeah. And so, so you're going to send us that language or where you're pulling that deadline and the requirements oh, yeah, that's right. um, associated with the yep. deadline to us. Yep. So okay. so the, the VCBB had written some sort of an action and sent it out saying we'll contribute. Uh, it, it's up to a certain amount by the deadline of September 15th. So I will forward you that VCBB information just so you have it so that you, you can see that that actually is a commitment. Do you have that amount? The uh, dollar amount? You said up to a certain amount. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a total of one point five million. Uh, that oh, okay. all, like so yeah. from each town. I think it's total. I, I believe it's total. Oh, total from all the towns. That's going to go very fast. It's yeah, so they're only going to they're only going to give one point five million out. Period. Yeah, let me double check on the total dollar amount. I'm okay. I, I have to check on that total dollar amount, but it's up to a certain amount by September fifteenth and. I recall, I think it's 1.5 um, million total, but uh, I'll have to double check on the- and, I, and I'll assume they've already committed some. Yeah. Because some towns have already given you- Oh, oh yeah, but I believe it's per, but I believe it's per, <laughs> but I believe it's per CUD. But let, you know what? Let me not go on my memory and let me get the document yes. and yes. send that. <laughs> well, that'll make a difference for us. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we have hand up? somebody have a hand up. Scott. I, I do a quick question. Um, 
Janelle, if if somebody's covered like we are and Carl is under either Consolidated or Comcast or whatever the cable company, if we're not satisfied with our uh, our service provider, would you be pulling fiber or, or lines up to areas that are already covered with high speed? Y yes, but not yes, first. Yes, but not first. Yes. Yeah, so it's going to take yeah, three years. Okay. Maybe four to get to all of the underserved and unserved in our districts. <laughs> so we we might build out some of the um, service addresses before that uh, using other funds, but we need to put our ARPA funds and we need all yep. toward unserved and underserved, and okay. we need to prioritize that. Just a just a, even as a matter not just of funding but of our our mission you know we want yeah. to make sure yeah. that we yeah. i might have missed that yeah. Yeah. yeah that that may, that makes sense yeah it's kind of a twofer really mm -hmm. anybody else so i think we've kind of got an action plan what we do for the arpa funds uh we're if, if you all agree with my suggestion that we check in with jim barlow about how to guard ourselves, yeah. and uh, we keep bugging uh, regional planning. Um, the other side of the coin is uh, we've got all, how much of ARPA funds do we want to give? Right. And then what sort of involvement do we want from the town in allocating the rest? I, I think we want a lot of involvement, oh, yeah. uh, but what, uh, what can we give them in terms of guidance and what sort of timeline do we want to set up for that process of soliciting ideas. Well, I, I don't think that's a big priority. I do understand we're going to do it, but the ARPA funds that we want to commit to CB5, we really need to make sure we get that in right now. Are we, are we going to reach out to the public and say, is it okay if we spend the ARPA money on CB5, for instance? I'm just mm -hmm. talking about that deadline that's fast approaching September 15th a month and a half away so i just want to make sure we get that in place if we're going to do that i mean i i think we saw enough enthusiasm for oh, I agree. setting I up agree. cv yeah. fiber yeah. when uh, it was unanimous or unanimous minus one yes. town meeting yeah. voting that in i i don't think that there's a problem with that it wouldn't hurt though to go out say on front porch forum uh, yeah. and just ask people about that uh and and what number is appropriate uh, whether it's a 213 or some fraction thereof. Uh, so well, that's, that's kind of tough. That's to get in the weeds. In the weeds, yeah, that's, that's too much detail. Yeah. Too much detail. <laughs> okay, uh, but then I, I would like to talk about the timeline for the rest of the commitments. Does it make sense, for example, to bring the question ultimately to town meeting in 2023, in which case, you know, that gives yeah. us a clear sense of, okay, we have a fall to talk about this and, and really yeah. went to put something together. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. So that's one timeline, but the timeline for the APA commitment is close. Mm -hmm. So we just want to make sure we have that ready to go. Yeah. And I think, so did, Judith, you had something to say? Yeah, I, I, I think when we met last, it might have even been last fall, I forget it, but when we met and talked about wanting to commit or agreeing to commit, I think we we picked a dollar amount. I think we had said a hundred thousand dollars. Um yeah. or and so um if if we get the I, I would be very you know if I receive from Janelle, I'm sure I will, the references she's citing regarding the September 15th and what we need to do to fulfill that and that it's not kind of a first come first serve and after a million dollars it's gone. Um, but if this is something we can take advantage of, then I would be comfortable with agreeing to that one, if we can get the language we want in order to do it by September 15th. And I don't know that we need to um, go back to the town and say, yes, we're going remember that you approved, you know, um, moving towards and investing in um, fiber. Well, we're going to do that, and we recommend do, using our ARPA funds. I think that that's something that we, as a select board, can decide to do. With res so, I think that your action items, Carl, are good ones. Bring it to um, our town attorney. You know, we'll all provide any inputs regarding the agreement or language we think should be in the agreement. Janelle's going to give us that information, and by our who knows, maybe by our next select board 
we can come to a decision and be signing things. Um, with respect to the other, um, the, the, the remainder of the ARPA funds, I think that, um, I, I think, it, you know, if we want to bring it to the town for town meeting, that might make sense and maybe have, you know, a series maybe once a month or once every two uh, select board meetings is an opportunity for people to present their ideas and then by the you know end of the year or beginning of next we begin to winnow that down to, to kind of the top items and then we present those to the town that's it <laughs> okay so just i just want to get one thing on that Judith did mention a dollar amount that was about hundred thousand. I, I am, I'm for leveraging every dollar that we can get out of the, whatever that association is for the state. So I would say, don't commit to the hundred thousand. If we can get two hundred thirteen thousand free money, we should do it. That's a lot of money that we can get to put towards these drops, which is. It's just free. Yeah, as you said, though, um, we can't be sure that everybody who's underserved or unserved will now, take it. So, good so what, what happens if we yeah. we ask you to spend the money in such and such a way, and you don't have a customer update to, to do it? Then, Janiel, that's a good question because can you put it towards the rest of the drops? Yeah. Yeah. So that can be outlined in how the town spends the funds. Uh, you can say, you, you, we, we can specify in the exhibit, because there's an exhibit to the MOU that says how we want to spend the funds. Um, so you can say, if, if this, then that, right? So if, you, if, if, if we get this amount, then it goes toward this specific drop. And if we don't have any more drops, it can go toward the library or whatever. Or you can say it can go toward the school up to a certain amount and a certain amount to each drop. And if there's leftovers, it will go, and then you can have a provision that says where it goes. So, uh, I would I would say it probably makes sense to put in somewhat detail what you want to spend it on, but you also want to leave yourself open to some flexibility because you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> so the way you word it in the exhibit on how to spend it within the town, um, you you want to specify, but you also want to leave yourself some wiggle room as well. Okay, so on the on the ARPA money that we give you. We can spend it on schools, other nonprofits. But is the school that it is an underserved area? Because I have consolidated exactly. and I'm on Lyle Young. I'm pretty sure I'm going to guess that fiber consolidated has run fiber lines on Quaker. The school may not be in an underserved area. But is the so, school qualify as a nonprofit, or do nonprofits qualify for? I, use I don't know. I, that's that's the only thing I don't know that we have a lot of areas that are in that would be they, they if the definition of underserved is a 25-3 I, I know there's fiber lines on Quaker so the school is or Vincent Flat. Well do, do Janiel do community centers and nonprofits uh well, benefit by this do they have to be underserved or unserved? Uh typically towns have chosen to uh, connect their their um, public, one of the things that towns are choosing to do is to connect their public facilities. Uh, I don't know if those towns have, are underserved or unserved in those community centers, but, but it is expressed, it, it's one of the express items in the ARPA funding is that it can go toward nonprofits. So okay. I, 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 I think there's a really strong yeah. argument that it could go. Okay, so we can go to nonprofits and underserved. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we just want to be clear on that. Yeah. So the question is, though, if you connect all your nonprofits and your underserved that sign up and there's still money left, can you put that towards hooking up other people that are not underserved? Or is that no, not allowed? No, no, you cannot because that's ARPA funds. Okay. You can, I mean, you, right. can, you can put your own town money from other sources or maybe for even from other funding sources, but yeah, not yeah. from ARPA funding sources. Yeah, we're just trying to flesh out the ARPA. And I think when Janelle and I spoke, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago now, she said oh, most towns, I think you said it committed anywhere from 30 to 50,000. Not much. And, and odds are they're hedging under a little bit because yeah. to your point, yes. if people don't take, I right. think the 427 number is assuming all of those people right. sign up. Everybody's going to cost 1650 to have to run the line. 
that seems like it's almost the worst case scenario. Yeah. So I don't think it would probably well, be wise of us to commit all the way up yeah, to that Yeah, but are they figuring the nonprofits in that figure? No. Right. Community community centers, um, pu public li libraries, uh, schools. Those are the other places that. Uh, but they that's not figured in the four twenty seven. No. Right. No. Right. No. Okay. So, so you've done a bunch of surveys, that, you know, before your time at the organization, Janelle, that Central Vermont Fiber has done a bunch of surveys. Do you have any data from those surveys that might give us a clue as to what percentage of these 259 households might decide to take advantage of fiber coming by their home? Yeah, we think, we think, um, well, there's a few numbers, uh, we put we we propose that it might be somewhere in the range of uh 45 percent but everybody we've talked to at the state thinks that's conservative so it might be more than that uh <laughs> we're we're trying to be very conservative on our business modeling yeah. Okay, well, we get back down to 100,000. <laughs> right. That's basically 96 would be right. that math. That's right. right. If we divided it in half. And, and, and if we decide to pay the whole 1650 average cost. I mean, right. We, we, and then, we, but we, then, we, then you've got to figure, figure whatever nonprofits. Yeah. Figure that in. I don't and, know what yeah. and, and Janelle, if you can provide us with the citation and the source for using these funds in this go round on nonprofits that are not do not fit within the definition of underserved, that would be helpful. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, you just wanna know where you can spend, where you could possibly spend it. Yes, Jean. I see your hand up, Jean. Just living just down the road. From, yeah, just living just down the road from the school. Um, I think you're gonna find that there is no fiber to the school. Um, and that we are served by an underground line that was put in the ground when the school was built from the junction of Cherry Tree Hill and Town Hill Road to the school. Um, and the internet connection along here is not very good. And there is no fiber going by on the Washington electric poles. Okay, okay. good so information. So we can narrow it down, right? Yeah. And then we'll have some answers by next. When's our next meeting? 22nd. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, so we probably ought to try to get it together by then. Yeah. U32 yeah. is a school itself, too. Yeah. But well, we got schools and whatever other nonprofits we can figure it out. Yeah. And to add that in to our 50%. We have a senior center itself. So. We have a senior well, at, 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 at the senior center, yeah, but the, fiber optic, the, the fiber optic line, um, consolidated fiber optic line from Montpelier to St. Johnsbury um, runs on the poles, not 40 feet from where I sit from my desk. And they want $22,000 to connect us to it. Wow. Nice. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, the, the splice point is down um, where um, Country Club and Coburn Road hit Route 2. And they yeah. would have to run a line back to us from there. Oh, I see. But the CV fiber line will be separate from that line. I would hope so. Yeah. So that'll be going by there eventually. Okay. I think we've got the information we need, and she's going to send us some more. Yeah. So we probably ought to move on. Yeah. But I think we have our to do list. <laughs> Okay, I'll get you guys the information on the matching funds and on where yeah. you can spend the ARPA money. Yeah, well, thank you for, for, Thanks, yes, thank thank you for answering all our questions. Have, have a wonderful evening. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, we'll try. <laughs> thank you. Bye. All right, so is everyone satisfied with that ARPA discussion? Uh, well, there's one more part of the ARPA discussion. Good, I see you. Yeah. I see it. Are you going to say something else besides what you've already said? <laughs> are, are you talking to me, Sam? Yeah, it says yes. Twin Valley. I'm just reading this thing up. Twin Valley Senior Center. And I see that under your under your face there. So I'm assuming you're going to talk. 
I, I think I'll be a little less complicated than CV fiber. Um, we are a local community center. Um, we struggle for funds. Um, we serve some 220 meals a week um, that after federal reimbursement and donations for meals costs us $7 a meal to serve. Um, the other issue is we own this fantastic facility that we have to maintain and hopefully upgrade. So what we did is we put together a list of um, capital improvements that we would like to complete. Um, divided the total over the six towns that we serve and are requesting from ARPA funds, essentially 3.6, 3.55% of each town's ARPA money to support capital improvements at the community, the senior center. Um, the biggie for us right now is paving the parking lot. Um, it's to have a parking lot that's gravel and potholed. It's um, really hard for walkers and wheelchairs to get through it. Um, and if you look at the letter, that's, that's the big project of our capital projects. Um, we thought it would be fair to split our requests among the six towns rather than um, looking at any individual town to fund these projects. Um, yeah, um, we, 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 we run a deficit on meals of, of essentially $5,400 a month that we have to make up through fundraising in one means or another, um, which makes it hard to maintain the facility. And we saw the ARPA funds available for community development and thought it might be a good and equitable place for the individual towns to place parts of those funds. Oh. Um, thanks. Thank you, Jean, for this um, comprehensive list. I was curious, um, how big is the parking lot? Like, what would the area be? Would it be an acre or less than an acre? It's less than an acre. Um, I don't have the exact square footage in front of me. Um, there are five spaces out of that that are... Um, earmarked for rental apartments that we have in the building. Um, but most of it, I, I'd say it's, the parking lot is 100 by 50. Okay, and you wouldn't be changing your access or anything like that in connection with the paving? Um, we're changing our access in regards to the handicap ramp project. We're moving the handicap ramp from out in the field, so to speak, to right up against the building so it can have a roof over it. So is that your answer, Judith, your answer, your questions are answered? Um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that there weren't any other permits that were needed associated with the paving. That okay, so I want to move forward with that. ARPA timeline. So we're going to get a lot of requests for use of ARPA money. And we're not moving ahead without allocating money until we get the process in place, et cetera, et cetera. So I was wondering what your timeline was for the money that you need. Are you saying right now? Um, for Twin Valley seniors? Um, yeah. Our impression was that needed to come up with decisions on um, expanding these ARPA funds uh, sooner rather than later. 
and that maybe that impression is incorrect. Um, I really would like to pave the parking lot soon. Um, yeah, because we're, we're not giving out that. We haven't made a decision on the projects, and that's going to it's going to take a while. We have a couple of years to make the decision. Yeah. So we can't just pass out, you know, uh, hand out the money willy nilly. We're we talked about this earlier. We're going to have a process. We need to vet the requests. Blah blah blah. We want to run by the townspeople. We talked about the town meeting next year, 2023. So we're not in any position to just hand out some money right now. Is that correct? I think that's correct. Uh, I mean, we could hand out some money right now, but that goes contrary to the goals that we've stated. That's contrary to the democratic process. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to do that. Yeah, but I, but I'm sympathetic to your request. One, one of the things for us is we didn't want this opportunity to go by yeah. without, without applying for the funding. No, well, you're, you were smart to put in your request early, and we're, we're definitely going to hold on to it, but we're not in a position to start handing out the money yet. We are talking about CV fiber, um, and that's something, a decision that we need to make right away because we have a deadline coming up for matching funds. So that part of it, we're, we're committed to moving ahead on. The rest of the money, which is a big chunk, we have not, we have not set up the process for vetting the proposals yet. And Carl, I just, excuse me, um, Seth, I just wanted to add another reason why we're going forward with CV Fiber is because the town has already uh, made yeah. clear their desire that we pursue that and the board yeah. had previously expressed its um, decision to go forward with that. So right. we've already kind of reached out to the public about its support for that. Yeah. So that part of it, and that's not going to be all the money, half the money, a quarter of the money. It's a, it's a relatively small percentage of the pot of money. But we're just not in a position of starting handing out the money yet for other projects. Yeah. We're going to set up a process. We're going to ask the town. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. So we're not, we're not going to be able to give you money in this year, in 2022. <laughs> Um, that that would be fine as long as you yeah. keep in mind that that we're yeah. there. We have oh, capital yeah. projects we need to complete. Yes. Um, and you, you are definitely um, in the running for some money because Twin Valley is a very worthy project for us to spend ARPA money on. So I'm not going to speak for everybody here, but we all, most of us have an expectation that we could give some money to Twin Valley, but we can't guarantee that right now. But I, all, all I can say is thank you for the request and we're gonna get, hold on to it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gene. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're done with that item. Um, everyone on board with the ARPA? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're well behind schedule. Uh, the next item is Center Road Speeding Concern. I'm looking at a letter and this packet and also the select board memo, email received from uh, Center Road, the speed limit in the center is 25. And then it moves to 35, I believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. on either side of it. Yeah. Okay, so. Even with a speed bump there. Uh, no, there is no speed bump here. Okay. Oh, okay. Can they hear us? Yeah. I'm Diana Fielder. I'm the one that wrote the original memo to the okay. town about the speeding. But yeah. on, on behalf of all the citizens that live in this congested area, we're really, really, really concerned about the speed around here. And the fact that our children animals and bikers and walkers it's a very active area and the speed is incredible and we'd like to see some options presented and enforced and i did send an email to vsp and i did That's the Boston state police yes correct and i did receive a response this afternoon ironically enough um, to that email and um, unfortunately, as we all know, if you watch the news, law enforcement is understaffed. So 
they're having difficulty one and just staffing regular operations and two having any extra people to dedicate and obviously we can't have someone there all the time so i don't really know that law enforcement is a great solution for this going forward anyway but i just wanted to let you know i did receive a response that while they would love to dedicate more they're they're struggling to even cover what they have now so, so we'll see our contract is like 20 hours a month right yeah, yeah. and they're, they're well under that right now so can we ask them to concentrate their 20 yeah, and they, hours they, whatever they, are. they do in they are that's, the what, he's, that's what he's going to do yeah, okay. they are going to shift and so they are going to do that it's just okay. you know that's not necessarily going to equate to constant okay you know police mm -hmm. presence there per se but right. Right. And they, I'd have to look, I can't remember how many hours they've been spending, but they're well under half of what mm -hmm. we Ooh. contracted for. Yeah. So it's been steadily under, I think, yeah. for well over a year, just yeah. the understaffing that's in law enforcement today. Yeah. So what suggestions do you have from uh, the center residents for, for things to do? Well, I mean, clearly speaking yes. is a concern and we want to help you. What, how do we help you? Thank you, Carl. This is um, Becky Reed. Yep. And uh, I just had a couple comments. One was uh, regarding the speed uh, monitor that you put up in the center that did not work from day one. So it never showed the speed that anyone was driving, never flashed to give them a warning and was utterly ineffective. And I think a good start might be to uh, repair that and maybe try it again. I also, um, wanted to comment that, uh, as you understand, enforcement is necessary because if you don't enforce something, people aren't going to comply. And um, I do understand that the state police are only contracted for 20 hours, but um, I may have been misinformed, but I understood that they didn't actually concentrate on the areas that you suggested, that they were given the latitude to um, do those 20 hours wherever they chose to do within our, our town. So if you can get them to uh, focus in this area, that would be great. Mm. And uh, Chris and I, my husband and I, would like to offer, um, at the top of our driveway, there's a wonderful cleared area that is actually uh, uh, town property that could be sat on uh, by a trooper. And it's in a good location because one, you're off the road, but two, that's where cars come down around that corner and are increasing their speed at that point. And as well as those that are going up the hill, they increase their speed to get up the hill. So it would be a very uh, convenient place for them to actually monitor. And even if just a few people were um, stopped and there was some check and balance about this speed limit, I think it would be affected because word of mouth, as you know, is great. Mm -hmm. So um, we would be happy to have you use that space anytime the troopers would like to. And uh, I guess when you ask for suggestions, Carl, I think another suggestion might be um, maybe not reasonable, but I think that I have seen them in Barry at least, those speed bumps that are long and low so that it doesn't affect plowing, um, but it is effective in slowing vehicles down and could be put anywhere at the top of the hill or down at the bottom of the hill. Um, but I guess that's my say, and I thank you for listening. So what's your address there, Becky, so we could put that down and give it to the state trooper? Sure, it's 1505 Center Road, and it's uh, right below the curve and it's very obvious i think we're the only uh driveway that actually has parking at the top we have a steep driveway going down but there's an area at the top that's very convenient for parking okay i'm gonna email i did receive a contact for a sergeant that's kind of more directly mm -hmm. um letting people know you know supervising the the team that is working yeah. on this so i that's why i want to thank you for asking for the address i was going to go look it up but I was right. going to give him that address, and I was waiting for the meeting tonight to then email email that sergeant tomorrow. And the other thing, the speed oh, cart. So is here. Yeah, the speed cart has been an issue. We have a number of people that want that Guthrie. Unfortunately, it's old. I mean, it was purchased at a yeah, it's used. Yeah, it, it, it was used in getting parts. He was I forget where he told me he called to try to get parts. He's running into a lot of issues, mm -hmm. and maybe we need to find out what the cost is for a an actual new speed cart. Yeah, we can I believe. 
Yeah, the cost is 3000 maybe? Uh, yeah, I think so. Hi, right, this is Malcolm Fielder, um, 1595 Center Road. We're going through, you know, we go through Montpelier or Worcester or Putnamville, and you see these blinking signs. I think they're run with solar. I know they're expensive, but boy, they catch your eye. And I think a couple of those, one going one way, one going the other way, would be wonderful. I know they're expensive, but so are kids' lives and dogs' lives and so on and so forth. So we really need to do something about the speed here. And it's not just people passing through. It's some of the neighbors that go fast. The kids from U32 come this way as a shortcut. And it is a shortcut from up here to Route 2. And they speed really fast. That includes UPS and Fed Express. They drive really fast through here. And well, we can move on too. So yeah, uh, we, we've had discussions about signs here in the past. I'm not a traffic expert, but the reading that I've done on signs is that there aren't many signs that really have much of, of an effect on motorist behavior. That is maybe, ESPs, I understand. Yeah, may, maybe if they say slow nudists here, that they do. <laughs> but uh, other than that, and they don't work in winter. I, um, I also but, think that before we if I could, at, If I could finish. Yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, one of the things that I've read does work is actually changing the physical conditions. And you've already mentioned, Becky, uh, desire for possible speed bumps, which I know Seth is against. But oh, I'm not. <laughs> now, wait a minute. But, <laughs> this uh, doesn't work again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm advocating for speed bumps as I know. Know. like work. I know. I just was your <laughs> Especially there. But, um, but another thing that, that uh, apparently works is narrowing the road. Uh, so have you guys talked about possibly narrowing the road in a few places to get people to slow down? Never thought of that. Well, that's them. You can have little bump outs. Yeah, that, 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 seems, bump that out. seems like a more um, permanent, I mean, it seems like speed bumps might be a less expensive and less permanent solution to that, um, you know, to have correctly placed um, bump outs. I mean, you need engineers to design it. And, you know, that's that seems like a pretty expensive cost as opposed to maybe looking at the speed bumps, which I agree with Seth, um, um, I, I would be for. <laughs> well, I also think with our farm vehicles, narrowing roads may be yeah. that's tough. a bit challenging as well. Yeah. That's tough. You don't narrow it down so that nobody can get through. You narrow it down so that people need to slow down. You, know, you like do the same flower pots. pots. That's kind of a good idea. Yeah, actually. big old flower pot. Close people. Yeah, <laughs> like they have in front of the post office. Yeah, Montpelier. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, there's also um, there's a resource available through uh, local motion to set out a temporary uh, with just with cones and chalk uh, a temporary solution to test it out to see how it works. So I, I saw them do that in Northfield, say, okay, what if we redirect the, the traffic around Depot Square this way? And then they observe and see what happens. And uh, then they, if they like it, they can go ahead and do a more engineered design. Well, let's, let's make a list here though. Yeah. I was going to say, the, the other thing is I get a number of complaints about speeding on many roads throughout yeah, town. Right. Yeah. So I also think we, you know, as much as this one, a letter was brought to the select board or an email, which is why this is here. Mm -hmm. I think we may also need to consider taking to town residents and maybe it's either a poll or however it may be, but mm -hmm. I can tell you we will get significant requests for additional speed zone so i think we need to just evaluate but, but this has been this thing. has been a, no this this is a paved it, road it's been that's a problem. why it's so yeah, it's so been fast. a problem ever yeah. since i've been this on is, the for this is the biggest issue and i want to have, have i want to have speed bumps they i work. agree i like the speed but, bump um, idea. i had a lot of pushback from other members of select board not for me not for you no we do have a we do have a culvert that's sunk down, which is yeah, I know. Yeah. Down. so yeah. I don't think I want that one repaired. <laughs> that's why I want to put the speed bump. <laughs> it's an inverted speed bump. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't happen. Okay, so we've got a list. Speed bump is a great idea. 
I, I love speed. And they're also, I've, I don't know how they're fastened in, but they're, uh, I would call them temporary speed bumps. Maybe yeah. they're not. They're these yeah. little things. Yeah. That they're like right. anchored somehow. Yeah. 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 They're like almost spiky. Yeah. They're, they're maybe drilled into the asphalt yeah. or something. But Where I moved from. They were I can tell you the road foreman didn't like my idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, pro it's hard to plow, probably. It Although is. Becky was mentioning that if you get the ones with the shallow end, yeah. they're yeah. easier to plow. Yeah. I think you can make one at the top of gold. Okay, and if you so know where it is, you know where to slow down. Yeah. Yeah, I have a sign. Bump ahead. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, well, thank you for bringing your concerns forth, and we are going to do some things that hopefully will help. Well, we appreciate it very much if it could be immediate, too. <laughs> well, we can get the state police there. The hours that they allocate to East Montpelier, we can get them over there. ASC. That would be great. I think yeah. their presence would just get the hint across, maybe. Yeah, but, but just, just, the, so, just so you understand the conversation that we had about the state police, we yes. we are contracted for 20 hours a month total for you know, special things that we request. And if we don't request anything, they'll go where they think they want to go. Uh, mm -hmm. But if we do request them to concentrate on something, then they told us that is where we'll go. However, because they are so understaffed, they are doing what did you say? Maybe ten hours a month. Yeah, they're charging yeah, it's for. definitely way less. So yeah. if we tell them to spend one hundred percent of their time on Center Road, it might be ten hours a month. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That's not always true because they go through East Montpelier and they may yeah. not be charging us, but they could take that route. True. Also. Yeah, well, absolutely. That's true. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. and. And hopefully they'll start at 530 in the morning because there is a 531 that goes through here like a jet. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'll, it's I'll, another I'll project. Watches if, if that stops. <laughs> I think yeah. Steve, I think Steve Miracle wanted to say something. Did you want to speak, Steve? I think Steve Miracle. Uh, I did have a question. Is there an opportunity to photograph and ticket like they do in other states? I don't think that's legal in Vermont, is it? I've never Maybe heard of not. I don't think it's legal in Vermont. And I know it's Arizona because I got caught speaking at one time. <laughs> uh, it just came up in conversations I had with others in the neighborhood. And uh, I, my observation is because it's downhill with a bend, uh, right where people are backing out of their driveways, it's, it's somebody's going to, it's, it's going to result in. You know, we should ask that question to find out if that's legal. Hmm? I think we'll find it's not, but we should. I don't think it question. is, but but it's a good question. Last year I fixed. Do you want to include that in Vermont State Police? I can ask. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last well, year I fixed the uh, the sign that the that would read the speed, but um, Guthrie didn't bring it back to me this year. He just set it up, and I was going to go and ask him if I should get it going for him, but I didn't mm -hmm. want to bug him. I, I tell you what's not illegal, and that is to stand by the side of the road and be filming yourself. Uh, you know, that has no no legal effect, but I've noticed that uh, it does have an effect on driver's behavior. Now, I would not advise doing that alone. I would advise yeah. doing that with company. <laughs> well, with a hair dryer. Mm -hmm. Um, this is Janice Waterman. I just want to say briefly, uh, we really appreciate the time you've allotted to us um, on this issue. And uh, certainly we're at 1555 Center Road and noticed an increase in speeding vehicles through the center. And I just want to leave you with one anecdotal story. I was going to Doty to committal service for a neighbor and walking down the street and a car was coming from the other direction, like so from Fred Strong's toward the center. He was going very fast and there were a lot of people trying to get into the cemetery and folks walking. So I just gestured to just ask him to slow down a bit. That did not go well. Um, he uh, he let me know in a <clears throat> with a certain gesture that that was not appreciated and proceeded to just step on the gas and the rocks were flying and he had to get off the road. And it's that level of um, sort of public safety that has um, really increased greatly in the last year or so. So thanks very much for your time. That's for speed bump work. Right? Yeah. Right? Because that exactly. gets to you. Yes. <laughs> well, it'll damage your car. That's, yeah. the, that's great. You yeah, can that, well, that's the point. Perfect. Exactly. You that's can the point. Exactly. Speed bump, but it's still there. It's still there. It's a consequence. Yeah, of yeah our exactly. Are right there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Another project. Okay.
Wow. So, so how are we going forward on this? Gina's going to call the state police, mm -hmm. and then we're going to look into the speed car. Okay. Yeah, I'll follow up with Guthrie. Like I said, he and I spoke a few weeks about it, and mm -hmm. I know. And the other thing is, we should talk about speed bumps. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have Guthrie in here? To talk oh yeah, Guthrie has got to be on board because that's why I ran into the problem last time was with the last floor form. Yep. That stopped us. But oh, so that room. wasn't a discussion with with the current road form. No. In the, okay. Okay. But I think that there's enough people on board with speed bumps now that maybe we can push that concept forward. So what happened with the sunken culvert is I want to make that into a speed bump. But one of the select board members said they didn't like the look of speed bumps. And I, I'm not all about looks of speed bumps. I'm about changing behavior. Yeah, they work. They work. Because people don't want, their cars, they don't want their cars damaged. So right. yeah, and they slow head, down. When the head hits the ceiling, yes. it sinks in. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. So the, that's the order of events. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. Yep. And the other thing we could do, just, just because I'm curious myself, is what, what do the signs cost yeah. that he's talking about, Malcolm's talking about? And I can check in with local motion about uh, the resources that they might offer in terms of road yeah. narrowing. Yeah. I like the idea, but I, I would just put big cement blocks there so when they hit them, it makes a difference. Can you do the explosive device? I like those. <laughs> I like the ones with electricity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're half an hour behind. Setting of the 20, 22, 20, 23 property tax rates. And so. Grand list of says three million, for the last year three million, an increase of seventeen thousand. Ooh, that's not very much. The current form form is three million. So the homestead rate is down nine cents. And the non is down. That's because the school is less mm -hmm. because our expenses have gone up. Yeah. So, so you need a motion to approve? Correct. Well, I'm just running through the math. So you have worked up the budget. We have the a worksheet, correct. Uh, yeah. Oops. I just like to look at that. <sighs> So 67 cents, and what was it last year? 65. 65, so it's up two cents? Yeah. And the school rate is 1.7, and it was 1.82. That's a big, that's a big drop. Mm -hmm. Is that because of state aid or more students? We just get the numbers, so that's all. <laughs> it's usually more students. Yeah, more students you get more state aid. Uh, oh, so the tax rate would be two thirty one. Is that what you have? Or non residential, residential. Yeah, two. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I mean, if that all works, I guess that's good. People like the taxes going down. They're going to attribute to our good management, but it's not true. No. <laughs> don't put that in the minutes. <laughs> you know what? You can't. I don't care. <laughs> it's the school decrease is what it is. And that's probably a tribute of attributable to more students. That's usually what it is. But could be extra ARPA funding. You think that um, goes to school? Schools have gotten ARPA funding. Have it? Did schools get ARPA funding? I don't know. Uh, they got COVID funding. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Whether it was yeah. from ARPA or other parts, I don't know. Yeah, it was direct COVID for relief. Ventilation and food that's right. preparation. That's true. That could be yeah. from that. Okay, I guess um, we need a motion to set the tax rate. I move to set the tax rate as proposed. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Are there any further discussion? Nope. 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Yes? The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Okay. Where's John tonight? He's out of town and did not make it back on time. Oh, okay. Um, oh, the next one is consideration of homestead filing penalty waiver, which is what we've done for the last few years. And remember the language on that? It's in the memo. Because you were right here. So the note I have says it looks like you've done this for the past decade. Yes, we have. <laughs> yeah. So we need a motion to do the same thing that we've been doing. Correct. I would move that we waive the um, homestead filing penalty as we have done in the past. Yes. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, perfect. Um, County Road Project Update. Looks like it's all bull mag. Yes, I don't have an incredible update other than that. And that um, Guthrie is gonna be meeting with our culvert contractor on Wednesday. Yep. Um, we expect that work to begin the week of August 15th. We don't have that specific date yet. That's what we hope to get at the meeting on Wednesday. So, I was hoping we can get it because I was hoping I would have a better update yeah. for you tonight, but that's 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 where we are. So um Guthrie will be reviewing that with the contractor in detail and hopefully we will uh, nail down specific timing. Once I know that, I will be communicating through Front Porch Forum when a road closure can be expected. Um mm -hmm. from the last I heard, we'll be starting at, at Morse um at that culvert. Um yeah. and that will be first open that back up before moving up north of Barnes. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. So it's gonna be closed at Morse Farm? It'll be closed at Morse, correct. This is what- But we can go around. Yes. To Barnes Road. Yeah. This is, as I recall, why we're doing it this year rather than last year after last fall after things were delayed because we promised Burr Morris that we wouldn't do it after a certain date last fall because that's when he gets so many of his tourists. And oh places. yeah, but we also didn't have the structure. The yeah, I don't think we had the culverts. Either. We didn't have the, the culverts. culverts they, the they didn't come through I think the main actually. reason, okay. from what I heard, was that the culverts I mean, were delayed. Okay. I mean, off cost us a lot. Uh, I, just, I just remember yeah. getting to a certain point and saying, we can't do it this year because of the agreement. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cost us we have another, like other things that prevented us from doing 300,000 bucks yeah. Yeah. in yeah. extra paving costs. Yeah. So okay. how about when we have Guthrie in to talk about speed next next meeting that we also have him just give us an update on this. And also yes. I'm curious to know about how the process is going with, with Chase and, and uh, them representing us. Well, they, they're gonna overlook yeah, the yeah. project of the covert set. Right, right. right. So but just do they like get, anything yet? No, I like to get his input on you know, how, how the yeah. conversations are going so far and, and maybe it's too early. Yeah, but by then they should have started. Uh, yeah. By then, no, yeah. they should have started. But we right. are, if not in the midst, if not complete, yeah. in the midst of, yeah. of okay. one of the culvert replacements. Okay. So, yeah. no, I. Good. Okay, so we're good on that. And now we're talking about an oil tank. <laughs> I guess our oil tank's no good. It's 3,000 bucks. I thought that the companies usually would just swap it out for you if you're a customer. I didn't realize that they actually charge you for the tanks. Oh, yeah. Wow, okay. That's why I fill my own tanks now because yeah. they won't fill mine. Okay. I'm like, I'm not going $3,000. Yeah, I don't know. It's just in the ground. It's in the ground? Yeah. Okay. There's a program you can get those out of the ground, I believe. You know, it's out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. 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 I
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I won't, I'm not going to tell anybody. Right? So, no, maybe I should have my water tested. Yeah. yeah. You better get your water tested. I'm, I'm downstream from them. You what? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, baby. <laughs> um, so, it sounds fun. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I don't really know what the options are, but there are no, there are no options uh -huh. no. unless you call somebody else besides Packer. Are they going to put it in? You could look for another quote. Mm. Got another opinion. Kill. Yeah, yeah. This guy, I don't trust any of them. I mean, I want to be conservative, but not do you have a recommended contractor? Because I, I wouldn't know where to go with that. Well, Conti stood. Conti Oil and Barry. Or Gillespie. Gillespie. Whites might too. I, I get my fuel from whites. I, mean, I don't know if they'll look at tanks. That I know Conti looks at tanks. Don't belong to their customers. Call, call in Barry. Yeah. yeah, it wouldn't hurt. Then take the lowest one. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to make a decision tonight, probably. Did he say it was urgent? Well, yeah, it's not say. winter yet, so yeah. I would imagine not. You got another week. I don't know what people's lead times are. I mean, I yeah. Idea. yeah. Is he going to pump it out and then do it, or is he going to wait till it's empty? It's He's just probably going to pump it out. Now. They would have to pump it out yeah. to replace it. So yeah. I don't know what that. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But I would ask somebody else. Yeah. Just for the heck of it. Okay. Uh, town office updates and maintenance. So with this, um, I'll yeah. make an example, but I mean, there hasn't. No one can remember when there's a, when the office has been painted. Uh, it was painted. Any well, work? It was painted about six years ago, probably. Well, we're here. Well, I was told by the previous TA I hadn't been painted painted since he had been TA. So you're talking about the inside. Oh, the, the inside. inside. He, said, um, he said both when I asked. No, the outside was painted. painted. The outside was painted. Yeah. Guy from Northville painted. Yeah, about six years ago. I well, I'm more concerned. But, well, not and concerned, I had some work done on the outside. outside too. What's that? Of the inside, but trying to create a more functional workspace than, than what we have now. Um, we discussed last meeting about the people sharing office. I would like to proceed with getting some quotes. From a furniture perspective, that's not a sunk cost. That's cost can be moved. But anything else, I know we talked last time about evaluating the building. Um, obviously, that would be for a new build, but what we could do today. Um, to make things a bit more comfortable for the people in this office. But you want to do some remodeling inside? Is that what you think? Well, I don't, I don't know yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so you're talking about possibly hiring an architect or something to see what you can do with the space. Well, I'm more immediately would like to get just new furniture, but that has but opened up. That has opened up the door yeah. to. Sure. Everything that hasn't room? been done and, yeah. and all the concerns and, and things that have fallen on deaf ears for quite a, quite a while. So, um, you know, furniture being number one, we did have someone come in. I am working to get a quote. Um, we do have some issues in some of the locations with just the desks that are there um, just don't work. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, that to me can be moved. There could be some potential in this building for moving walls to make it better than it is today. The lobby is an incredible wasted amount yeah. of space. Um, whether that would make sense to do or not, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what limitations we have because it's a historical building. Yeah. We don't, we don't have any limitations for that. Okay. I mean, as far as remodeling goes. But you do have structural walls. That you well, of course, yeah. of course. So, I mean, we're open to ideas yeah. within this space. I mean, we've long thought that we should build a new building, mm -hmm. but it's expensive. Of and course. we're still paying the bond on the fire station. Yes. So we sort of held off on that. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what that is. Which I think makes complete sense, to be honest with you. Yes. I don't and think so we've kind of made do with this building. I don't think that is necessary in the immediate yeah, future to me. Same. But we, we would like to make the space usable yes. for your suggestions. And you're right. It is. I mean, you could make this a more usable space. I mean, that's kind of wasted over there, too. I mean, that's. Well, let's just use that. I know that, but I yeah. mean, does it have to be a giant trot? I mean, I don't know. I mean, Put a cubicle in there or something. I don't know. It's just weird. It's weird. It's not a good workspace. Yeah. And something else I was thinking, this is Judith. Hi. Um, I was thinking that um, the 
meeting space where you're all in, um, it's really not very big or functional as a meeting space because it slopes and it's so small. If there's a member of the public and all of the select board members are there, it's you're really packed on top of each other. Whereas, is it possible to maybe make use that space as office space and have all of our meetings at the fire station? Hmm. I mean, that's something to think about. Um, yeah. Because, you know, frankly, I don't feel comfortable in that space when everyone's there and we have members of the public and ORCA um, and it's it's just too crowded. I'm with you. We've had sound issues at the fire station mm -hmm. that I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was certainly a challenge at the last meeting we had there. And I was told that that's a constant issue when we're there. Um, In terms of their alarms going off? No, the, the air the air system, oh. there's never a good place to set the camera up. Uh-huh. Told that people on Zoom don't hear, can't right. hear well. And, and right. it happened with the last meeting, but Bruce had warned me about that right. um, before. That it was it's always an issue when we have meetings at the fire station. Right. Is that something, Sean? Do you have any opinion on technological solutions to that? Because we have pretty much taken our technology from here and presume and gone over to the fire station with it. But if we spent some time thinking about, okay, the ventilation system, the need for, I don't know, more microphones spaced out or something, um, is that something that Orca could help us with? Probably. Um, it would just, I think figuring it out best technologically is always potentially better outside of it. Right before a meeting, yeah, like absolutely. A different time where yeah. we figure it, figure yeah. it all out better. I've done meetings there twice. Um, I don't think there's been a, any sound issues at times. I've done it. I know that one time I did. There was that like loud alarm thing that was happening mm -hmm. like intermittently. That scared us all. Yeah, that was scary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, when it happened the first time, I thought of something wrong with my stuff. But, uh, being in the fire department. But it, it's it's definitely kind of all about where the microphones are. The hardest thing is probably getting the audience well. Um, because when most of the time we've done up there, there's been more people in the more right. kind of things, right? right. Um, and one thing, an easy fix for that is like having them come talk in one spot, like to right. really set up a microphone as opposed to talking where they are. Because once they talk where they are, and we just have that one public microphone. It's just turning up the levels yeah. to like hear them, and that brings everything to stuff right. too. Um, so that's like one potential thing for for audience people. Um, I think that was probably the last time I did was one of Bruce's last times, and he mentioned a, a good place for the camera that someone had set up before, and which ended was, up unfortunately being an issue because then the air handler was right above that spot. That's uh, actually so why we had sound issues. Time. Yeah. Okay. And I will also say there's a little bit more work in setting up the meetings over there. Sure. There's right. reconfiguring of chairs and whatnot. Yeah. That has to happen as well. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. convenient here. Yeah. It is. So, it is. Yep. The copy machine is right yeah, there. Yeah, everything's right here. Yeah. All the right yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, all the paperwork has, to, has yeah. to be drug over there. Yeah, yeah, sure yeah, sometimes you find things. And, yeah. So so what about the short term thing about the furniture? Because we gotta take off some of these things. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm working on getting okay. growth. We have one company that came in that we've at least been pleased with their design process. Another one we were not pleased with their design process okay. and not pleased with their. So design. you set that in motion. So yes. Yeah, so this is step one. I okay. want to get some numbers, and you know, because okay. I honestly don't. The last office I was involved in helping with procuring furniture was significantly larger and in a completely different state and town. So I have yeah. no idea what the prices are today. Um, yeah. That was done. It was just last year, um, but. Yeah, economies of scale tend to drive prices down a little bit. So the cost per workstation there would be yeah. less than. So I honestly have no idea what. Okay, so is that a good price. thing to start? I mean, that sounds like the first yeah. place to start. Yes. And, and what would be the second? Is it painting? I something? think painting. I mean, there's been some com not complaints, but um, <laughs> comments about the carpet. You know, could the be carpet's nice been an issue ever since. Ever. Yeah. So what do we want to do about that? It was like if you rip up the carpet, you got to figure out what's underneath it. Yes. And whether you sand the floors and do without carpet, 
I mean, is it all hardwood like this? I think I, that I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, so, and I don't know. My experience, hardwood could be difficult to refinish and rather well, actually, probably. probably more economical to replace the carpet than we can do that. Refinish the floors. We but. can. I mean, whatever works. For yeah. Me. So if we did a serious blowout, though, I mean, like if we're really thinking that that might be a possibility, not today, but to sometime. do what? Like if we were seriously going to configure the space, like if we're going to move walls potentially, things like that. I'm not sure that's very feasible considering the age of the building right, and how it's structured. Yeah. I mean, you mean everything is load bearing every single wall? Pretty much. A lot of them are. Okay. In a building like this. There's not that many walls. So, yeah. in my head, <laughs> they have to be mostly load bearing. The building no, is really old. Seriously. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, I'm not sure that's that feasible. I okay. mean, we can look into that. So, we should make it look nice for the time being. So, painting with that's a, that was my question. Like, I mean, would we bother painting if we think right. that in a year or so we're yeah. going to blow it all up. But no, I don't think we're going to blow it up. I, I don't. I mean, I, I, I can understand the desire to have a new building, but it's not a bad space. It's a good location. I yeah. mean, I, you know, yeah. I don't personally think there's a whole lot wrong with this building. I just think it needs some, it has some deferred maintenance. It just well, hasn't there's been a history. And, there's a history of yeah. the thought of the building. Yeah. People, when they have put a lot of money into this building, 25 years ago, I wasn't on the second board then. They're like, well, we're going to make it last for 20 years. And then somebody came in five, you know, not too long ago. Wow, we only expected this to last 20 years. What are you going to do next? Well, you know, everything is in pretty good shape. I mean, we have spent some money here and there on it, but it's still going. Yeah. You know, the roof is good. The foundation is good. We've done some drainage work on it since I've been here. We've done this and that. We've got insulation in the cellar. We've done a lot of stuff. Yeah. So we've nickel and dined it along. It's okay, but there are some things that could be done. Yeah, and furniture is easy, and furniture right. is not a sunk cost. If furniture is what furniture could be moved whenever we do and decide to build an apartment, then that's <laughs> what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. If, <laughs> if we are going to have somebody come in and look at the structure, it would be really interesting just to get a sense of how we can fix this room to make it work a little better. And this, this yes. slanted floor is for the birds. And what would it take to get the floor flat? And maybe think about the boundary between this area and, and the Lister's area. It's a weird because now that we have room for members of the public to sit there and no room really for them to sit there. Can we change that? I don't know. Maybe it's just a matter of moving the, the screen over a little bit and moving all of these over foot and a half. Yeah, one thing, no offense, I haven't gotten pricing on is replacement furniture for this room, uh -huh. though that probably is something we could look into as well. Yeah. But I'm more worried about the people that yeah, sit in here, here for a couple eight hours. hours a day. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we're not in here that much. And when we have hearings, we go over there. That's we true. have a lot of people. In. That's true. Most of the time, people could care less about what we do. Because some of the staff have said, we need new conference furniture. I'm like, oh, that's fine. We need what? They're not here all day. <laughs> I don't really care. So, but, but we want you to be happy. So that means new furniture? OK. <laughs> we'll get, we will get pricing, and I will let you OK, know. that's a good idea. Yeah. Now, as far as the carpet goes, that has been an issue for quite a while. Well, and I'm going to be honest with you. The one thing I keep cautioning staff is there's a lot of logistics that goes on with carpet and painting. And yeah. there's a lot of stuff in this office where right. it's all going to go to right. do. So I keep kind of let's 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 be practical. Mm -hmm. um, my office alone, I'm in a shroud of filing cabinets. Yeah. I need to go through all of those and clean some things out before I can even begin to attempt to but, see the But the carpet stuff. thing's not so, that difficult. I mean, no. it can be done. Yeah. What was the work that we did in response to mold complaints a few years ago? Do you remember? Down cellar, get it dry. What didn't we do some work in that part of the office as well? Oh, I, I don't know. We didn't really. Oh, didn't, didn't we, we get some some kind of thing, or filter thing that we set up or something. That's what we did. We did something. I don't yeah, know. but we never did anything about the car. No, no. Yeah, the cellar is actually quite clean. What's that? The cellar is quite clean. Mm. Yeah, we we gotta keep it clean because it, um, it floods, yeah. and so they won't cover the stuff or something. If we keep stuff down there, it won't get covered. Yeah. So that's why we went with a storage unit. No, I don't know if we still have the storage. Nope. Unit. It was all brought into my office. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. It, it was. It but then we good. did sneak a few things down there. I think Bruce told me to put a few things down there. Right? There are some things that we yeah. have started to take some boxes of things down there of things that are, it's up off the floor. Yeah, towels or something. And it's not, it's not anything. The yeah. important stuff is in the vault. Yes. You know, I yeah. mean, it's nothing that if it did disappear, maybe things were not really willing yeah. to let go of. 
nothing that would be critical if, if something were to happen. Yeah. Um, that's that's the way to me yeah. you have to look. The real critical things yeah. within that vault. Yeah. So okay. So okay. so I will come back with information okay. for you. Perfect. Um discussion on town management light of COVID 19. We're Listen. low. Okay. We're at 30.82. Okay. Which you can probably multiply by two or three or four to get the actual rate now that uh, people are doing the home tests yeah. much more than anything else and probably not reporting positives. But yeah, it's that very us, tough. That gets us up to the magic hundred, which was the high for community transmission before. I just feel obligated to point that out. He's right. Yeah. And I don't know what to do about it. None. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Drink. I don't know. Okay. No. Um, then I have the ex the warrant um, for you. There was a special warrant that Chair Gardner did sign um, that we had to cut a check because we had to reconcile a final, pay final payment to Beamers on July 13th. On August 1st, on the warrant that you have, I did want to point out that there is the culvert purchase. It is one of the culverts on County Road. Um, that is the one north of Powderhorn Glen. Um, the amount was $18,714.50. Um, right now, we're just including that in the highway budget. Um, we will continue monitoring the budget as we get through the year to determine if, I don't know, we may need to look at capital reserve or some other use of that fund. But for right now, it seems like an okay place to hold it until we kind of see how things go. So okay. that will be the third culvert that wasn't a part of the original county road project that will so be done. That's a culvert for 18,000? Yeah. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. So that- That culvert, Guthrie, will be doing at the same time- Yes. When the culvert contractor is doing the one north of- Right, Florida. but there's no grants or anything attached to that. No, no. there's not. That's just one we're replacing because the road's opened up. Correct. Yeah. That's the one that had the metal so plate. So we may need to pay for that as some as a source. Yes. Besides the road. Yes. Maintenance. Currently, budget. obviously, that is a bust to his budget, but you know, I think it's something we can just monitor as we go through the year. Yeah. Honestly, some of the fund balancing and some of this, we're about to go through the audit next week. A lot of answers for the new treasurer and myself will be answered as we go through that process as it relates to balancing the funds. So we've left this where it is until we have those conversations. With the auditor. Okay, so that's. Oh, I skipped that. access permits too. And the IRS IRS curb cut. cut. Yes. Oh, airs curb cut.
Okay, so we have to do that curve cutting. Yes. Mm -hmm. I move to approve the new curve cut on Foster Road, first number 22-054. Second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so that does the access permit. The warrants for signing. And I've got to sign this one. Uh, all three of you. Dave, that's the oh, this access is the permit. Oh, this is correct. Okay. That's the access yep. permit. So. Can I use the scratch paper? Get back on working. Sure. While you're signing, one question I did have for all of you was the meeting schedule. If there were any issues in having the meetings on the regularly scheduled October time, which would be October 3rd and October 17th. I didn't know if there was, Fine. if everyone would be here and would be available. Well, if not everyone's here, then. Well, or at least enough. If three people at least yeah, would three be of available. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't see any problem. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we, we normally juggle things around in the summer months, but the, and then December is a mess. Um, but other than that, we keep- Well, Labor Day is always- Right. Yeah, which we're, yeah, that's yeah. what we're covering there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think lastly, we have personnel matters. Personnel matters. Is there any Only, other business? I wasn't here for that. No. Okay. And for personnel matters, I just wanted to update today is the last the last day for us to receive applicants for the municipal assistant position. So we will be scheduling interviews. Um, well, once we identify our final candidates that we would like to meet with, um, we will be scheduling interviews and the hope is to bring that candidate to you on August 22nd. One thing I did want to confirm with the select board is that we would be conducting a background check on this individual because this person will be handling money. Um, for the town office. So I just wanted to confirm that that would be that the board agrees with that, that we would conduct a background check. Do you have um, a lot of applicants? We do have quite a few. We have a few. Good. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. So, yeah. I think, I think background check is fine. Well, it seems yeah. like that's what we do now. I'm kind of just a little bit like, I didn't really do that before, but it seems like it's a good idea and everybody agrees. So. Yeah, yeah, we did not do one for the zoning administrator position, but my understanding was that the real kind of catalyst or the need for this was the handling of money, yeah. which right. this position right. does do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that it is right. it, it is prudent for us to 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 do a background check on the on the individual. Did you guys decide at last meeting on what the process is for interviewing the candidates who was involved? Really, what we had discussed, I think it may have been even the meeting before last, was that uh, the post of position was that myself, Michelle, and Rosie will be conducting interviews, identifying a final candidate to then bring that candidate to the select board. Okay. Sounds like a good process. Works for me. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Perfect. That's all that I it? have. For... Will the select board interview that person? Then? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Well, yeah. yeah. As part of the August, yeah, August, August, August 22nd yeah. meeting, correct. You would be interviewing the candidate. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. We would identify our final candidate in the hopes that then. You all agree with, right. <laughs> with our final candidate, but right. yeah, no. Oh no, absolutely. Yes. No, the select board will be interviewing before any offer is, is officially made. Right. And then there is another personnel matter for which an uh, uh, employee compensation for which should we ought to go into executive session. I think continuation of the discussion that we've had in past meetings. For employee compensation. compensation. Um, um. Uh, oh, we want to wait until John is here to discuss that. that, that or? That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I just wanted the full board on uh -huh. for talking about 
You think about that? Yeah. 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 I just wanted to full board on that. Uh-huh. It just seemed like the fairest thing to do. Yeah. So we didn't talk about last time because you weren't. Right. Right. And, and if I, I understood it, the question was uh, you know, lining up questions for getting legal advice on. I, I'm not for that. I think okay. we've already gotten that. I'm for yeah. I personally for letting it happen. Okay. Yeah, okay. where it's going. Okay, so but, but that's just me. So, sounds like we need to have the board together. Yes, we, we do. Need yeah. board together. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that was what I was aiming for. To have okay. everyone together work on it. Okay. <laughs> all right. I have some ideas about it, but we'll just talk about it when all of us are okay. together. Okay. Okay. Are we going to be all together next time? I hope so. I'm going to be here. I, I'll be here. What day is that? August, August 22nd. 22nd. It's a Monday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> golly. <laughs> well, I don't work on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> That's three weeks from now. I'm sorry to say. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll probably be there in person because I'm going to visit family this weekend for vacation and I didn't want to, I've, I've been safe so far and I don't want to bring COVID with me to them. So after I see them, I won't be as concerned. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah. perfect person. Everyone has their own. Yeah. Yep. Doesn't really matter. Okay, yep. I guess that's it. Yes, I'll sign these more. Should I move to adjourn? Sure. Okay, I'm in. And do the second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs>